a real delight to be here. Um, when I first saw this movie, I was just a kid, and I had no idea what it was. Uh, the year was around 1968, the place was Queens, and my grandfather was uh, showing some of his home movies to us kids. Uh, they were just regular home movies, and then suddenly this weird clip comes on with these shifting color patterns, and we all said, what is this, Grandpa? And he said, I don't know, it's just something I picked up. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Now, the second time I saw this movie was just a few years ago. My I passed away in 1977, and I was just now Thanks, starting buddy. to um, inventory his extensive home movie collection and put it on YouTube. So when I saw this clip again, I had the same reaction as I did back in 1968. What is this thing? Okay. So I put it on YouTube, and I gave it the title, Psychedelic Bing Crosby Video. Uh, I figured somebody out there in YouTube land would... Uh, be able to recognize it and identify it. Okay, now I got some very interesting comments on YouTube. Most of them were amusing, like, uh, uh, like, uh, what was Bing Crosby smoking in that pipe? You know? And like, this is really freaky, man. But none of them were really helpful. But then, about a year, about a year after I put it on YouTube, I got a comment uh, from this Bing Crosby fan who said, oh, this is probably one of a series of Aurora Tone films okay, that were used in the treatment of mental health patients during the 1940s. What? <laughs> wow! Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, uh, one question remained. My grandfather had nothing to do with the making of this film. How the heck did this weird movie show up in his home movie collection? Well, I was talking to with my dad about this, and he told me something I never knew about my grandfather before. During the 1940s, he was a salesman, but he had a part-time job. He showed uh, movies to mental health patients in hospitals in the New York City area. It was a great way to make uh, money on the side. So, uh, apparently, uh, that's how he picked up this film and brought it home. And it's a good thing he did, because the film you're about to see just might be the only surviving copy of an Aurora Tone that we know of today. Uh, okay, and now to give you the history of Aurora Tones and the man who made them, my grandfather, okay, is Mr. Walter Forsberg. Um, so it's really wonderfully appropriate given um, how big of an organ enthusiast uh, uh, Ralph and what film technology are because um, looking into this weirdo story of uh, this movie, uh, I found a couple things. I'll just enumerate a couple of bonkers points about this movie. Um, this, we, we, we knew that uh, there was a name Cecil Stokes attached to this technology of Aurora Tone, and it turns out that Stokes was a British born um, tinkerer who began trying to make a color organ in 1932. Um, and the idea of color organ goes back as far as Isaac Newton trying to make a correlation between the musical scale and the colors of the visible spectrum. Um, and I guess this, the, all of this I just went through and looked through periodicals to try and find info, but I guess Stokes had the idea for an aurora tone while relaxing on the Gulf of Mexico at sunset and seeing the sun <laughs> on the water. Um, we don't really know anything about Stokes except for two or three points. Um, one was that he was a member of the Amateur Cinema League and wrote an article in the September 1927 issue of Movie Makers, that, the publication of that organization, um, about religious filmmaking. And um, the kind of connection uh, between the Aurora Tone technology, which was a color organ projection using crystal growth, um, crystal growths that had been created by being bombarded with sound waves. Um, uh, Stokes's Aurora Tone projection technology began to be used by pioneering broadcast evangelists in the Los Angeles area during World War II in the 1940s, and they would broadcast over the radio sermons that would be um, broadcast from old vaudeville theaters like the Biltmore. And some of these uh, uh, crazy broadcast evangelist people like um, Sister Amy and Clem Davies, actually from British Columbia, um, began using Aurora Tone projection behind them while they gave sermons. Um, eventually, uh, Stokes would show his uh, color organ projection 
around at various women's gatherings, community art clubs in 1943 and 1944, as well as department stores. Um, somehow, Bing Crosby uh, learned of this and was looking for tax shelters for all of his money, and uh, he's investing in media technologies. Of course, we know that he invested a lot in, in Jack Mullen's uh, magnetic tape, which um, eventually led to the development of videotape in 1956. Um, I know it's so weird. Uh, anyway, Bing Crosby and Cecil Stokes started a nonprofit foundation where they would make film prints of the Aurora Tone projections and circulate them uh, to clubs uh, and other benevolent uh, kind of purpose-driven uh, organizations. And eventually they started doing tests on returning World War II veterans um, uh, as this kind of soothed the nerves of what we, we might term PTSD in these people. Um, and uh, he, you know, there's all, all sorts more, but like rejection letters from Hilary Bay at the Guggenheim and, uh, and some note that Chiang Kai-shek in China wanted Stokes to make him an Aurora Tone of the National Anthem. Anyway, we're going to see the only known existing Aurora Tone uh, thanks to Robert Martins and Film Technology.